Some say the word odredek is of Slavonic origin and try to account for on that basis. Others again believe to be of German origin, only influenced by Slavonic. The uncertainty of both interpretations allows one to assume with justice that neither is accurate, especially as neither of them provides an intelligent meaning of the word. No one, of course, would occupy himself with such studies if there were not a creature called Audra Dick. At first glance, it looks like a flat, star-shaped spoof with thread. And indeed, it does seem to have thread wound upon it. To be sure, they are only old, broken-off broken bits broken of off thread, bits. knotted Three and monsters. tangled and together, yeah. tangled of the most varied sorts and colours. But it is not only a spool, for a small wooden crossbar sticks out of the middle of the star. <laughs> And another small rod is joined to that at a right angle. By means of this latter rod on one side and one of the points of the star on the other, the whole thing stands upright, as if on two legs. One is tempted to believe that the creature once had some sort of intelligible shape and is now only a broken down remnant. Yet this does not seem to be the case. At least there's no sign of it. Nowhere is there an unfinished or unfinished, unbroken surface unbroken. to prove anything of the sort. The whole thing looks senseless enough, but in its own way, perfectly finished. In any case, closer scrutiny is impossible since is extraordinarily nimble and can never be laid hold of. It lurks by turns in the garret, the stairway, the lobbies, the entrance hall. Sometimes for months on end, he is not to be seen. Then he has presumably moved into other houses, but he always comes faithfully back to our house again. Many a time as you're going to the door and he happens just to be leaning directly beneath you against the banisters, you feel inclined to speak to him. Of course, you put no difficult questions to him. You treat him, he is so diminutive that you cannot help it, rather like a child. Well, what's your name? You ask. He says, and where do you live? He says and laughs. But it is only the kind of laughter that has no lungs behind it. It sounds rather like...
And that is usually the end of the conversation. Even these answers are not always forthcoming, and often he remains mute, as wooden as his appearance. I ask myself, to no end, what is likely to become of him? Can he possibly die? Anything that dies must have had some kind of aim in life, some kind of activity which has worn out. But that does not seem to be the case with... Am I to suppose then that he will always be rolling down the stairs with ends of thread trailing after him before the feet of my children and my children's children? He does no harm to anyone that one can see. But the idea that he is likely to survive me, I find almost painful. Mm -hmm.